In this video, I want to talk about the options you have for insulation in your new home. There are actually quite a few out there, and depending on what you're trying to do with your house as far as budget and things like that, there may be some that would be more advantaged than others. I'm going to start with the ubiquitous one, the one that we all know and has been around forever, which is fiberglass insulation. Fiberglass insulation is a well-known product. It's the most commonly used insulation in a house. It works perfectly well and it is probably used the most because it is the least expensive. So from an advantage standpoint, the pricing is fantastic when compared to some of the other insulations out there. The R value is pretty good and if it is well installed, meaning it doesn't have big gaps and hasn't been squished, then it performs well. It's not a great air sealer, so air moving through a wall is able to transfer back and forth, and air sealing is something we focus on a lot these days. But if installed properly and other air sealing is done in your home with versions of things like poly seal and caulk and seal, it is a very good insulator. In the end, insulation is really just designed to prevent heat or cold from transferring through it, and it does a good job of that. It's also well-known, easy to work with, and very much a DIY project. I bought an old house, tore out all the sheetrock off the garage walls, and put bat insulation in the walls myself, something I would not have tried with spray foam and things of that nature. So when it comes to the easiest to work with, the least expensive, um, something you could do yourself, Fiberglass insulation is the way to go. We are limited in what we can do in the walls of a house. Either the walls are two by four walls, so they're four inches thick, really three and a half inches thick, or they're two by six walls, so five and a half inches thick. And that's it. You're limited on how much insulation you can get in that wall. However, when you get into the attic, one nice thing about fiberglass insulation is the loose blown stuff can be blown as thick as you want. So you can go up into the attic and have them spray more fiberglass insulation. You can even go into an existing home and just have an insulator spray more and it will increase the R value in your attic. And that's good year round, whether it's hot or cold outside, you're getting that advantage in the attic. Fiberglass insulation, great product, been around forever. It's probably still gonna be around forever. So I do recommend it, especially when you're on a budget. When considering insulation, the second product or option you could look at is blown cellulose. This is a paper product that is blown into the walls and the attic and used as insulation. It is treated with borate, which gives it a fire retardant and makes it resistant to pests and bugs. Uh, it is, has an R value comparable to fiberglass, a little bit better with a little bit better air sealing properties because of the density of it in the wall. One of the disadvantages though is the potential of settling where over time that paper starts to settle a little, little bit and you have some open space left at the top of the wall cavity. That's your second option. It is affordable, just a little bit more than fiberglass insulation. Downside though is it's not a DIY product. You will need to hire a professional insulator to install it. Blown cellulose insulation, your number two option. Your third option for insulation in a new home is mineral wool. This is also known as rock wool. It is a bat insulation, meaning it comes in sections that have a paper on both sides so you can put it into a wall cavity or onto the floor of an attic. The advantage of mineral wool, it has a good R value comparable to something like blown cellulose and fiberglass. Good air sealing properties also because it's fairly dense. Excellent sound dampening. So it is often used as a sound insulation in between walls when you are have interior walls of a house, maybe a bedroom that is common to a family room or in an office situation. It also does not catch fire. It is mineral after all, so it is not flammable and it is water resistant. So from that standpoint, it's a great product. It's uh, a little harder to get. You generally need a professional installer. You could DIY that, but it is a bit messy, a little bit heavy compared to something like fiberglass. But it's a per perfectly valid option that does have some real advantages over things like blown cellulose and fiberglass. 
Then we have the spray foam options for house insulation. The first one is open cell spray foam. This is what I use in most of our houses and it's most common in residential homes. With open cell spray foam, the advantage of it is it is an excellent air sealer. It is high expanding, so it fills up the cavities it's sprayed into. Even if you have some tricky areas to get into, a foam insulator can spray up in there. It will expand and it will completely, you know, encase that entire area, making it very good with air sealing. It is not impermeable. It is called open cell because it has little pores or open cells, as they call it, throughout. That does allow air to eventually get through it. Same with moisture. So if you had a leak in a wall or a roof and it was sprayed there, you would eventually see the foam insulation get wet. It is something you can cut out, find the leak, fix it, and then put the insulation back in place. Not that same insulation. You have to respray some new. But it's easy enough to work with. It is relatively inexpensive when compared to closed cell foam. It is, however, more expensive than uh, products like fiberglass insulation. It does do a better job at air sealing. It does have a little higher R rating. It also is great with sound insulation. So when you are living close to a busy street, a highway, something like that, using spray foam in the walls will help with that sound insulation to the house. Open cell spray foam is a very common type of insulation being used more and more, especially in higher end homes. We do what's called a full encapsulation where we spray it in the walls and underneath the roof line to encapsulate the entire house, including the attic. So you actually have an attic that is relatively cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Uh, so open cell spray foam is the first of the spray foam options you can do for your insulation. The next type of spray foam option is called closed cell spray foam. This has no pores or cells throughout. It is impermeable. It will not absorb water or allow water to go through it. Same with air. It ha also has a higher R value, the highest R value of any wall insulation that you could use, whether that be fiberglass, cellulose, mineral wool, or open cell. It is, however, a lot more expensive. It is not used generally in residential homes all the way around. It may be used in certain cases where somebody wants to use it under a roof line because they're afraid of leaks. Uh, definitely used a lot in things like steel buildings because you want to add the water uh, protection measure as well as some structural rigidity, which it has because it does, uh, when it cures, it's a very dense material that helps add structural uh, rigidity to whatever you spray it to. So closed cell foam is your second spray foam option. It is a great product, just a bit more expensive than open cell spray foam. The last product is not really a wall insulation. It's an outside your house insulation, and that's rigid foam board. So companies like Huber make Zip R, looks like the zip wall we see on the outside of houses that is green, but this is a thicker material that has insulating properties. You can go anywhere from, I think, an R6 to on up with that, but it gets thicker and thicker as you go up in R value. And because it's on the outside wall of your stud wall, it is an exterior sheathing on the house. As it gets thicker, it could have some complications with things like the brick and stone and around the windows. I think it's a great product to use as a supplemental insulation. So if you have a two by four wall on a house and you want to get more R value, more insulation on those walls, you can't do anything on the inside because you're limited with how thick you have to put insulation into, how thick of a wall. But on the outside, you could add something like the zip bar to add insulation to that wall. So from that standpoint, I think it's a great product. It kind of has its, its place in my mind of how it's gonna be used, but as a supplement to existing insulation, same with the roof lines, I think it's a great product and something we'll probably be seeing used more in the future. I hope this video was helpful. Just kind of a rundown of all the insulations that are available out there. What you want to use may be based on your concerns about things like fire, off-gassing cost is a big one. You know, if you are building a 
budget home. These days, a budget home could be $300,000, but if you have a tight budget, something like a fiberglass insulation may be the way to go. You just want to do some additional air sealing in the home so you can use that type of insulation. If you have the budget, something like an open cell spray foam uh, kind of kills two birds with one stone with the air sealing properties that it has. So I hope this was informative and helped you know a little bit more about house insulation.